everybody, it's Sam at Mixed Up Craft. Thank you for watching my tutorial today. I'm going to be showing you how to make this really, I think, very sweet concertina panel card. So that's what I'm calling this. Every time I do a concertina card, they're always well received. And many of you share them regularly over on the Mixed Up Crafters Facebook page. And one that is always shared a lot is the Easter concertina card I done last year, or maybe even the year before, which was all squares. And it just popped out of a box or folded out of a box. So this has kind of evolved from there, um, but I'm using the egg die by Card Making Magic, which I'll show you in a moment. But you don't need the die, you know, you can use any shapes you want. But I think it makes such a lovely display piece or a card. So you could have this, you know, it could read happy birthday, it could have the person's name. It's just really, really nice and it fits there inside my 5x7 envelope box card, which I'll link. So, you know, you can really go to town with it. I didn't, I wasn't sure if all the dimension I added was going to work when we go to fold it all up, because you can see there the dimension you get, but it fits. You just saw me take it out of the box. It fits really nicely in there. So that alone makes a nice gift and obviously you can decorate all that. I haven't because I'm keeping this one for myself and it's going to be displayed on the mantle along with all my other Easter decorations around it. But if you imagine, this is how you see it. I'm trying to, it will be like that. It looks lovely. I really, really do like this one. I love the colours that I've chosen. And if I just bring it up, just so you can see a little bit closer, we've got the holographic cardstock for that kind of bead trim around the very outer side. And then I've got glitter on my little daisies. I've used these decoupage little rabbit images, which I found from a few years ago. And then I've used the holographic card again for the letters and just created a little scene on each of those panels. And I think... It looks really, really sweet. So lots of inspiration, hopefully you'll take from this one. And um, as I always say, you know, I've done it for Easter, but it doesn't have to be. This would make a lovely Christmas card as well, or anything you want really, any shape, any colors, it's entirely up to you. So let me show you how to make it. Okay, so I've gone ahead and die cut everything and I'm gonna show you how to put together the last pieces because, you know, once you've done one, you, you, know, you know how to do all the rest. So this is what I've already done. Um, so I've got Easter, E-A-S-T-E-R. So I've already stuck this one down because this is going to stick on top of this one. So what I've done, um, the front and the back, you don't have to, but it does give it a bit more stability and it also conceals the hinge there. So if you see now when I flip mine over, from some sticky glue marks there, but you can see there's no, you can't see the, the tabs, okay? They're all concealed inside. But, you know, it's up to you. If you're going to have it as a display piece, then you might not think you, you know, there's no point really. So, but if you do want to, it does add that stability. So I've got that one to go there. But before I stick that one down, because I've got my last one to go down here, off this, just at the end here, I need to add another hinge. And that's why I thought I would show you it. So if you've got this die set here, which is the Card Making Magic Extravagant Egg Die Set, you're going to need, first of all, the largest one, and you want to die cut, well, I've die cut 12, because I've got six on the front and then six on the back. And then I've die cut six of all the others, because you only need these for the front. So this is that lovely beading trim, which I really like, and I've done it in the holographic card just around the edge there, and I think it looks beautiful. Then I have die cut these two together to give me the white trellis. And then I've just die cut this one six times to give me the pink to stick the white trellis onto. Okay, so that's how I've got that look. But as I mentioned at the beginning, it doesn't matter what you use for this, whether it's square, rectangle, flowers, anything you want. All that's you know you need to know, and um, just for me to really give you some hints and tips, is how to put it all together with the hinges. You can make it as long as you want. You could just have a couple. And um, if you... Again, like I mentioned, the one I made last year, I'll link that one here if I haven't already linked it. You know, that was coming out of a box, so yeah. But this one does fit in that five by seven, which I shared. So I have got one of, well, I've got this one here because this is gonna go, on the, gonna, gonna go on the back, but I'll just show you how to put it together. So I've got this one here. Then I've got this one, which I've already put the trellis detail and everything on too. I've used the cloud glue throughout just so again it's nice and strong. Make sure I get that right around the edges and then I'm going to stick that one right in the centre 
and then with the trim. Now, some holographic cardstocks, the Kalau glue can strip, but this is that thick one that I've recently purchased from Hachanda. It was that deal from Pink Frog, and it doesn't. So I have very carefully just gone around with the fine tip nozzle here and just put some Kalau because if it oozes out the sides, it just you can just rub it off. But obviously, if you've got um, some of the other mirror card stocks, if any of this Kalau touches the front, it will strip it because it's a solvent glue. So I would suggest to use, you know, a white glue, you know, a PVA kind of style. So just bear that in mind. That's if you're using holographic cardstock because, you know, not everybody will. But I've just popped that around there. Because it's the egg shape, I just know that that's the, this is the thicker bottom. And it will just very easily fall into place. And I'll just tack it down there just so it can grab. And I'll just give that a few minutes. And then I just went over it all with my finger and just kind of rubbed over it and just rubbed away any of the excess glue. And that's one of the beauties of this Kalau. It just doesn't ruin your project. You know, some of your um, your uh, liquid glues, they if you rub over them, they smudge and you get, you know, might get them, get it a bit dirty. But this one just rubbed straight off. So I'm just gonna do that quickly. that's that all done now I've got my hinges so really the amount depends on how long you're having yours so for me to have the word Easter I've got one two three four five okay so this is a piece of two by two and I'm just scoring at one inch just down through the middle there and then just fold and burnish it and just do it both ways if you want to score on both sides as well in case you're worried your cardstock might crack then you know it is best to do that so you know, ignore that I've already done all of that. You'll do this the same. However you do it on the first one, you want to make sure you do it the same on every single one, okay? So what I done here, so pretend this was festival, the first one that I done. You want to stick it within kind of the center of the shape that you're using and make sure you keep it straight. Now it's easy if you're working on a square because you can use the lines of that and you can measure down from the top. And I guess I could measure down from this, but because I'm working on that curve, it's hard to line everything up. So I'm using the grid on my mat here to keep, when I stick this down, to keep it completely straight. So I'm gonna just keep it lined up with that line there where the fold is. And then once you're happy that that's all straight, that piece, your next one, you will line up with that. And we're gonna fold this over. And again, just make sure everything kind of stays in place. So just, you want to just make sure that you kind of stick to that same kind of process with all of them. Now again, because I'm working on that curve, I'm just going to lay this down and just run my glue so it kind of roughly follows the shape there of the, uh, the egg. And then I'm just going to add glue to the rest of that. Flip it over and stick this one down. So I know that I need to keep it lined up with this line here, which runs along here. So I know that that hinge is all you know where it should be and I'm basically just having about I don't know just under a quarter of an inch overhanging kind of coming out there you just want to make sure that it can you know concertina fold so it's got enough to be able to fold over on itself so that's that one there so then I'm going to add glue to this one and stick it over the top so it just conceals like I said earlier the hinges a very very simple card to do concertina cards always seem to do very well I think for that reason they look really effective they're actually very easy to do and then this one here you just need to line up now I haven't cut the bottom off to make a you know that flat base because I'd already done the one on the back but again I'll show you because I haven't done it at all on this one what to do and then how to make sure it stays consistent with all of the others so I'm just showing you just a few little tips just to make sure you get a nice result when you do yours. So now you've got that one, so that one will fold that way, that way. So you see when you fold it, so when that's, that glue was still kind of tacky, fold that one over and make sure they all sit nicely because you've got that you know time to move it because you've got the wiggle room with the glue. Right, so next we've got the last one to do. So with this one here, and just again, going to add the glue, just kind of in a bit of a 
an arch shape but again because I'm using this one I can rub out anything that oozes over the edges and then this one here so again if I just keep that all lined up the top of this oval runs with this line here so all I need to do now is lay this one down and make sure that that sits the same and then this is when you can fold this one over onto this one again whatever shape you're using and just move it so it sits perfectly over the top so it's another good way to make sure they all stay the same because if you've got one slightly higher than the other your concertina is going to kind of be rocking all over the place and you don't want that so that's that one then I've just realized I've stuck that one over the top and that one needs to go underneath so I'm going to flip it around because I'm working with this shape it doesn't matter whether it's you know it's not like a you might have a flower die or something that's all different got different leaves and it's not a mirror image whereas this one it doesn't matter so again I can just sit this one down fold that over make sure I don't get any glue inside but that's okay now because you want to have that underneath you want the hinge on the top so that this piece then goes over there and seals it all up I'd already stuck this down earlier so I had to peel it off so that's why it's already got a ton of glue on it but then again with this one I'm just sitting it over the top like so and you just would continue that so you may have another hinge here coming off and so on until you're on the last one get that little bit off there again fold that over I can see everything lines up and the whole thing it's a really nice piece you know it's a lovely card for like I said display card for um, you know whoever's going to receive it and also on the back you might want to put one of them with a white panel and stamp something on there just so you've got a place to be able to write your message if you want to do that. So now you just want to decide which way you're going to have your concertinas but that's how I'm going to have mine and it does it looks really good but now I need to just these are rocking you see these end ones probably not so much because all the rest are flat so we'll pretend that this was the first one I'd done this one it doesn't really matter how you do it because it's the first one so I'm just going to use my metal ruler and my cutting knife. This one will be okay, the ends come off but um, you might want to do this before you decorate. But basically if I do it this way because it's a better angle for me and make sure your ruler runs along, so make sure this is all straight, your hinge. It's easy again if you're working with a square or something and then I'm making sure that my ruler runs parallel with one of these lines so I can keep everything straight and I'm just coming up here about not even one eighth of an inch it's just a smidge and then I'm just going to cut like that so I haven't ruined any of the design and then you can then fold that one over onto the next one and you can just get your scissors and just cut and then fold that one over onto that one scissors and cut okay this one I actually only need to take off but I'm going to do it this way because I don't want to ruin any of that trim so I am just going to this one because I've just done this differently for the video but that one's going to be fine because all the rest are okay as long as there's something that's flat see so I want it that way because I want I want the E the first letter for you to see and the last one for you to see like facing you okay so I've already gone and cut the word Easter E A S T E R. Oh, really spelled it wrong. T R E. There we go. So these are using the stamping up letters. I was actually given these as gift. So these ones can be pretty pricey, and I don't know if they're actually still available. There are lots of other companies that make nice large letters. Also, if you've got a digital cutting machine, you can use that. But also, another nice thing to use is this one here, and it's the We Are Memory Keepers Mini Alphabet Punch Board. And I have, I'm sure I've got a video where I showed you how to use this because I think I used it when I made some thank you cards. And it's just really, really handy and it gives you a very similar size. If not, it might be slightly bigger, but it's got a nice style about it. In fact, if I've got the book here, yeah, here we go. This is the style of the letters. You, um, Yeah, the letters. And you can also put little flag tails on the ends. You can make them, you know look a slightly different shape like you can see the k there has got little flag tails but you can see the a and the f so if you you know and this is you know a good value for money so you can pick it up at a good price 
and you can just do all sorts. You can make, there's a larger one, so like I said, this is the mini, but it will give you a similar size for this, and it's the mini that I find I use within card making. The normal size one is big letters, perfect for bunting and things like that. So I'll share links to it and stuff, have a look at some other YouTubers maybe, and I'll link the video, if I find it, of the one that I used. But I'm gonna have these along here, but I feel it might need a little bit more. I feel that that's just a little bit plain for me. <laughs> so, and the R is just off camera there, because obviously I can't fit. Bring that one along there, there we go, you can just see. So that's what I'm gonna have there, but I'm gonna have a little look around now. Now that I've got it all together, it's a lot easier for me to start thinking about design. I think I wanna have something behind it. Look at my Easter stuff. I don't want anything too bulky because obviously I do want it to fold up and to fit into a box, although this is gonna be more of a display card rather than me sending it to somebody. I think I'm just gonna keep this one. So I'm gonna have a little look at what I've got and then I'll be back. Okay, so I've gone and die cut a ton of these daisies. Now this is from this plate here. I've had it for a long time. A good few years now and I can't remember where I got it from. It may well have even been given to me because I was given a few plates from a friend so it may well have been in that so but any kind of daisy dye or flower dye you know it doesn't even have to be a daisy but I just thought daisies I know they're classed as a weed but I've always loved them and they're very pretty so I just die cut the plate and you get well you can if you want to keep them all individual then you've got a lot there in one go but you just layer them up so I die cut this four times so I like to use like the same size, you know, so you've got two of them to make that size, for example. So that's just two of that one. And then this one here is two of this one here and so on. So you just glue them together, just shape them a little bit. And then what I've used is the Nouveau Drops. And this is such a lovely, oh, it's English mustard, really nice yellow. And I just put a really nice blob in the centre. And because they're self-leveling, they will just form a really nice embellishment in the center there of the flowers so that's what I've done make sure you leave them to dry do not you know get, I just left them to one side and carried on doing other things and then I've come back to this later on today so you know make sure they're completely dry the smaller ones will you know dry pretty quickly because they're just small little dots but that's what I've done there then I've gone and die cut a ton of leaves is this one here it's an old stamping up one but is anybody else like that there's just sometimes there's just this one leaf that you always go to and it's I just always grab this one so I've got loads of other ones but I just think it looks quite nice behind you know the daisy can't quite see there we go okay so that's what I've done there so I've also got these now I've had these for a couple of years and they are decoupage little bunnies. I've cut that one off the back there because I was playing around with some arrangement. It was up higher like there but I need it to come down so I'm going to just pop it behind him there. But you can see just it's all different layers just stuck on top of each other. So I'd already done these, they were the, you know, I'd done these a couple of years ago and then never got around to using them. So there is a lot of dimension you can see there. But because I'm going to be using this more as a display, I won't be sending this to someone. You know, I'm not too worried that it's not going to maybe fold up you know as well as it maybe should so just bear that in mind you don't want to add too much bulk if you do want it to fit in that box um, however this will probably still squash in there anyway so what I'm going to do is spell out Easter so there we go and then the R's down the end there and then I've thought this one you can just see there but I'm going to have down there and then I'm going to have not the biggest one, I think it was like the one of the smaller ones, like this. So I just want to create a little scene and then where I've just got the letter, I'm going to have like the large one and then like a small one at the top and that's when I'll bring in the leaves as well and kind of build that around. So I just want to create quite a nice, you know, little cluster and just lots of detail on each one. And then, so every other, then I have a different one of these bunnies. So I'm going to have that one there, and then again have maybe that one there, and have some leaves coming down, and then the T, so I want another big one, and because I've got the large one down there, I'm going to have the larger one up here. So I'm just trying to like balance everything out, and then do a smaller one down here. Again, we'll add all the leaves in, and then do the same with the E and the R, which is just going off screen there. But I'm going to put this on high speed now, get this all stuck down. Probably going to bring in my Wink Costella pen, um, and I think then that it probably is enough because I think once the leaves have all been put on there I think it's going to really um, fill that space so yeah I'll be back in a minute
Okay, so here is my finished concertina display card. I think the little, each panel, I'll call them a panel, I think they look really, really cute. So there's that one, and then we've got the A, the S, T, E, <laughs> and finishing there with the R. And I've also gone over all of the flowers with my sparkle pen. As you can see the daisy there. I don't know how well it's actually picking them up. I'm trying to hit the light a bit better. But it is there. You'll probably see it in the photos. So mine, again, it does all fold up. Oh no, I want to do it. Well, it's up to you. You might want to do it that way so it kind of then opens up, I guess, like a book. But I've had it, I've been doing it like that because that's... No, that's not how I want it to be. So I guess it's up to you. <laughs> it doesn't make any difference. But you'll see there, you know, I think that is still going to fit in the box perfectly. Let me just check. This is my 5x7 envelope box. And let's just make sure I don't catch anything. Yeah, you have to be careful. Yeah, I think if you're putting it in the box, it's going to be better to do so the front is folded down first, like so. I've got things hanging over the side, but it doesn't matter. Um, you know, it's what we've, we want because you've decorated it. No, it fits perfectly. So there you go, even with all that dimension, it still fits perfectly into that envelope box. And I will link that if it hasn't already been linked at the beginning. And um, that's all ready to decorate. I won't be doing that because this is going to be, I'm keeping this one for myself and it will be displayed on the mantle um, along with other Easter you know, decorations and things like that. So yeah, I'm super pleased with this. I think it makes a beautiful card, you know, have somebody's name on it. You could say happy anniversary, happy birthday, depending on how big you want to do it. And I'll link in all the other concertina cards because, you know, you can take elements from this one and pop it into those as well. So yeah, I hope you've enjoyed today's tutorial and I'll be back very soon with another one. Thanks for watching, bye.